I bet you're pleased with yourself. Saving Ravenguard and making a fool out of me in a single swoop. Go on, do your gloating. You've earned it. Damn right I did. My father is safe and my chains are broken. Yes, celebrate your fortunes. But remember that they are lost as quickly as they are gained. For now, you've tipped the scales in your favor. But all it takes is a whisper for me to tip them back. Raven Guard will fall. I will strike when the Duke has the most to lose. And I have the most to gain. Clause A, Section 2. Should Soul Holder choose to abandon his patron, he is freed from his duty. His father, Grand Duke Older Raven Guard, will be thus fated to die by an enemy's hand. A sealed pact is mightier than even Asmodeus's ruby rod. Do you think by merely saving a duke that you were ripping it through? You're such a witless little thing. Laugh in the face of the Archduchess Zariel. And she only laughs back. By all means, struggle and seethe when I come for Zariel's prize. Play the hero. Put up a fight. But don't forget who signed away his own father's life when Raven Guards finally bled. What's this, cousin? Another absolutist come to see what we did to poor old Sarin. Your god took her mind, cultist, so Vareki took her head, and I burned the flesh from her bones. And now you come to interrupt the funeral rites. I... Yes, cousin. An excellent idea. Cousin says we will take you in return. He says you look just like kindling for Sarin's funeral pyre. He is clan, summoned in the place of the friends that I lost. Sarin Bereki and I, we were the three finest thieves in Baldur's Gate. We broke into the offices of Gortash, discovered he was with the Absolute too. Your fellow cultists hunted us, so we hid down here. We were safe, and so was our loot until the darkness soured Sarin's mind. She kept our treasure from us, said Bereki and I had gone strange. Hush, cousin. Sarin turned into a cultist herself, so we did what we had to. Bereki wept until his voice was gone, and then he was gone too leaving only me to conduct Sarin's rites. And my cousins here. You cannot conduct the rites without a clan to bear witness. Or some fuel for the fire. <laughs> she swore she was no cultist, but you all lie. The absolute turns you. I don't know. I don't know. Pass, then, and do not come back. This is Sarin's final resting place and a killing ground for all who come to disturb her. Let me back in. I'll bring the Rowakin out here, you tin tube. You tell the Rowakin I went for his goddamn night song, and now he has to pay up. What are you looking at? Maybe. I don't know you, though. And I'd thank you to get out of my face. Laroakan. Wizard that owns that shop. 
sent me on a wild goose chase into a hive of goblins for some relic. Said it would be an easy take. I lost good people, good friends. The night saw my ass. Sorry, won't bring him back. Pay the debts or compensate me for my trouble. Don't know. Don't care. But he did offer a king's ransom for its return. Sod it. Enough. Laroakian and his precious knight's home just about ruined my life. If you value yours, I'd stay well clear of this place. How can I help you? There it is, rather. Master Laroakan has us keep it to a high standard. I'm his apprentice, and uh, in addition to attending the shop, I'll one day enter his tutelage. Mm. I've heard rumors about Laroakan's teaching, or lack of it. His students are no more than glorified shopkeepers. You must be here to shop. I am Sandri's, while Tona deals with tomes. Or are you perhaps another adventurer with information on the Night Song? Nothing for you to worry about. Literature department, can I help you? Whist. These books are sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. Old. You might have heard that our library has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Lerokin was reluctant to house them in his tower. The pen is mightier than the magic wand, apparently. <laughs> They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Tharkia Codex, the Annals of Cassis and Netherese Folly, Sites of the Sealy, and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? It is said to be written by Lord Cassis himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra, failed, and was banished for the attempt. Great magical knowledge lies within those pages, but not many can withstand it. That's it. That's what I need. The annals of Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the crown's true nature. If only you could read them. Bye. Books as temperamental as these are not on sale. They are secured in our vault, where none can harm them, nor can they do any harm. Consider yourself lucky to have learned of such a book's existence, and then forget about it. The annals of Carsus are best left unread. Customers like you are why I prefer the company of books. The only way to gain access to the vault is through my office. And before you ask, no. You are not allowed in there, either. Psst. I already told you. It is locked in our vault. And with good reason. Imagine if a tome so dangerous was sold to someone with such poor comprehension. Welcome, dear patron, to the floor at the top of the stairs. If you have information about the Night Song, Great riches await. If you are here to waste the great wizard Laroakin's time, reconsider. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. Claw. Uh, Craig's aim is much improved, but uh, still leaves something up to chance. Yes, sir. 
All right, crank. Ready? Aim. Oh. Hmm. We have a visitor. At ease. McClaw, you may go. I see no night song. Uh, surely you wouldn't have entered my tower without the night song in hand? Surely you wouldn't have wasted my time? And you must have an answer to my request. If you want to keep your head, of course. <laughs> uh, the night song. Do you have it or not? She? Then you do know her. You've been to Shah's temple. To the Shadowfell. You've looked upon the Night Song's face. Tell me, and choose your next words carefully. Where is she now? Dead? That cannot be. She... it... Is a mortal, a god. Is that meant to be some consolation? She, it, was the key to my immortality. How can this be? How can this be? Shit! Oh. I finally have the tome I needed. Such knowledge, such power contained in such a small object. The truth of the crown, I hope. All that stands between us and enlightenment is the turn of a page. This isn't what I expected. This is much more. The crown of Carsus. And this, this is no mere journal. It contains Carsus's original plans for the crown's construction, his designs for godhood. Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate, and for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. The book states that the crown and nether stones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three nether stones, and with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think I could reforge it to every end you can imagine, and a thousand more beyond. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last would be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. I don't know. Ao does not look kindly on gods meddling in mortal affairs. She may have no choice but to stand by and let events unfold. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Carsus's successor. She sent me to die. Ambition is not a sin. To question the powers that rule us is not treason. We must at least try. Why wallow in the dirt where we can reach for the stars? This is no passing whim. Trust me. If I can obtain that crown, it will affect us all. It's not a decision I'll take lightly. 
it's our future that I'm thinking of. Can't rely on anyone else to do it for us. For now, we've learned all we can. That tome proved to be even more valuable than I ever could have imagined for both of us. You don't have permission to be here. You're about to be ejected. Congratulations, you've convinced them to give you access. Now what? An act of vandalism has taken place. You might want to clear up this particular mess. You've been given the benefit of the doubt this time, but something tells you next time you won't be so lucky. Elminster? Oh, hello, my boy. No, don't mind me. I'm uh, just enjoying a lungful of bull durian air. <laughs> yeah, there's a distinctive aroma, though perhaps not one worthy of bottling. I hear you've been browsing in the most esteemed of emporiums, sorcerous sundries. <laughs> uh, indulge my curiosity. What wonders did you discover there? I trusted he would be sensible enough to exercise caution in this matter and to seek the truth. By now, you are aware of the evil we are up against. Cassos as pestilent crown, the very tool with which its eponymous creator unmade an empire and magic itself. Perhaps now you understand what is at stake here, my boy. Though what Mr. asked of you was extreme, it was not without merit nor demand it lightly. What are you saying? Or rather, what are you not saying? Mistra knows you defied her, Gail. Well, of course she knows. She's Mistra. She bids you come to her holy shrine in the Stormshore Tabernacle. There, she will grant you an audience at last. I see remaining optimistic is my duty, especially when I'm not the one being asked to do the seemingly impossible. Trust in yourself. Trust in the weave. If you are willing, trust in Mistra. There is a conclusion yet to be written in this sorry tale, Gale of Waterdeep. And yours is the quill that will write it. I've often asked myself the same question, but never really found a satisfactory answer. He clearly sees something in me that I can't. The wisdom and intelligence required to overcome almost insurmountable odds, perhaps? All the stupidity required to attempt it. I take it as a compliment either way. You don't get to be 13 centuries old without becoming a sound judge of character. And cheese, apparently. I regret many things in my life. Choosing to be here, intact and unexploded, is not one of them. Though the orb still seems to offer our best hope of destroying the brain, I retain some hope that another, less costly solution can be found. For now, to have a few more days in your company. No, I wouldn't change. Excellent idea. I'll be there bright and early tomorrow.